Well, to help us explore the challenges of humanitarian aid following natural disasters, we welcome Kevin Conroy. He's the Chief Product Officer at Global Giving. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Now, the Nepalese government, it's short of water, food, electricity, helicopters, doctors. Like, where do you start? Given the extent of the devastation, what's most needed at this stage? Well, the, the Nepalese people have a number of needs right now. They need food, water, medicine, shelter, clothing. Um, those things are, are difficult to bring in right now because there's only one international airport in Kathmandu and the airplanes are backed up there. Um, so the international community is responding by donating funds to try and help uh, international aid organizations as well as locally driven organizations that are on the ground in Nepal to get the resources that they need to respond. And what would you say is the best way for these international organizations and foreign countries to coordinate their aid? Uh, the best way would be for them to use the uh, UN U o o H C R for them to be able to coordinate all of their efforts as well as to involve locally driven organizations uh, to bring them to the table to find out what those needs are and to be able to respond to those effectively. And just explain to our viewers uh, what that is. <laughs> so um, the UN is, has set up a group to coordinate uh, using a cluster system so that um, organizations that know how to uh, deliver medicine and food can you know, work together. Organizations that know how to deliver temporary shelters can work together. So that uh, a lot of these international organizations that are responding are aware that, that they are you know, all coming into Nepal uh, and they will try and coordinate their efforts. Now in terms of actually getting this aid to the people who need it, what would you say the biggest concerns, given the poor infrastructure in place at the moment? Certainly. I mean, as we've seen reports uh, throughout the day, that even as if you are able to get to Kathmandu, it's very difficult to get outside of the city and into these remote villages. So I think the first challenge will, will be for them to clear the roads and allow them to be able to get to there. And then after that, it's to really work with those local organizations and find out what those needs are. Some areas might need water, others might need food. And so it's going to take a, a very diverse response in order to be able to address those problems. Now, in terms of the actual money and funding getting to the people who need it, for example, in 2010, the earthquake in Haiti, a lot of the project, the money never trickled down to the people that, who needed it. Mm -hmm. What would you say is the best way for governments to make use of the foreign aid to make sure it gets to those who need it? I think the best thing that the foreign governments, uh, governments could do is to work uh, not just with the major international players that are coming in, which they absolutely should, but they also need to work with the grassroots organizations that are already on the ground in Nepal. They've been there for decades and they're going to continue to be there for decades. And they're the ones that will be able to address all of the needs in those remote valley villages that are outside of Kathmandu, the ones that are inaccessible right now that are the most hardest hit. And we don't know the extent of that damage yet because the roads and the infrastructure is cut off at the moment. Now, there are some estimates that the disaster costs could equal Nepal's entire GDP. Mm -hmm. What does that mean for people living there? It's an extraordinary disaster, and it's going to require an extraordinary response from the people of Nepal. And we're fortunately already hearing that they are rising to that challenge, that people are opening up their homes for strangers. They're selling water at a reduced cost. Rather than raising prices at a time like this where supply is very scarce, they're trying to make sure that everyone has the resources that they need uh, when they are available. And so I think um, as the Nepalese people are banding together to help our neighbors, we as global neighbors of Nepal need to band together and offer them a hand. Now, one of the things that's also scarce is water, and there's always the issue of disease. A lot of these tent cities have popped up as temporary housing. What's being done in that situation? Well, it's a very difficult situation, of course, and they're trying to uh, you know, get additional supplies uh, into those villages as quickly as possible. It's a very challenging situation, and I think that uh, everyone is doing the best that they can, uh, given those resources. Now, what sort of long-term support will the country need once the rebuilding phase starts? Absolutely. So uh, recovery efforts uh, for disaster like this typically measure in years, whereas the public interest measures in days. And so um, one of the best things to do would be to support not only an international aid organization, but also smaller grassroots organizations that will continue to be there long after the, you know, the headlines have, have gone away. Um, and it's, I think, going to take a continued interest and investment in the Nepalese uh, economy in order to help it thrive. And for people who want to help, but they want to make sure that they're going about it the right way, that it actually gets to the people who need it, what, would you, what information would you give to people out there who want to donate? Well, I'd say you should, uh, if you should give to an international organization that you trust, but you should also try and give to a local grassroots organization. And that's what Global Giving is able to help do. So if you go to globalgiving.org, you can donate to our ne uh, Nepal Earthquake Relief Fund. And that will allow you to be able to support uh, a vetted, trusted local organization that I've been talking about that will be able to reply, uh, respond to these needs in an effective way. Well, Kevin Conroy, thank you so much for that great information. We appreciate it. Thank you.